थैंक यू भाई विवेक एक पानी रख भी देना यहां पर स्टार्ट कर सब ठीक है तो बता दो मैं 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 तो तो करवा देता ठीक ठीक है 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 आप हम सब सब
very warm welcome. Greetings to the people. It is the very first session of the business environment that is MMPC 003. And this course is divided into four blocks, covering total 14 units. And today I'll try to cover the block one, which carries four units, including introduction to the business environment. There are four units. First is introduction to business and environment. Second unit that will be there in the block, economic development, economic growth and development. Third, that is also very important, social, cultural, and political, legal environment. And the fourth one that is very much, very much important in the context of current scenario, that is business ethics and corporate social responsibility. Myself, Dr. P. V. Arya. So there are certain objectives that I mentioned in the beginning of every unit. So we can go through in detail so as to understand exactly what are the main objectives of the respective unit. As far as the business environment is concerned, there are standard definitions given by learned economists, learners, learned academicians. So the one that we can consider in a very easy way is given, given by Keith Davis. That is business environment is the aggregate of all conditions, even and influences that surround and affect it. Then there are further definitions. Uh, you can select the most suitable to you. And the recent one is by William F. Newark, which is business environment is the process by which strategists monitor the economic, governmental, market, supply, technological, geographical, and social settings to determine opportunities and threats to their firms. Now, I take the liberty to share one case study uh, that may be appropriate in some context and that may be very good example to represent the concept of business environment. So this is basically a case study uh, that is related to an FIR, recent FIR. Uh, it is related to an incident of theft and you can see some of the CCTV surveillance camera that is over there. So there was a similar incident in the same location some years back. Then there was no CCTV surveillance. Police case was registered, so uh, the routine process was uh, kept on. The problem with the investigation and the solution was that uh, there was no coverage for that person, there was no identity of that person. So, in the need of the uh, for the purpose, or for the uh, need or origin of uh, something incepted in the mind, so the persons or the residents voluntarily installed CCTV surveillance mechanism in their places. This similar incident occurred after a couple of years again. So now we have reasonable CCTV coverage, but still uh, the problem is not solved because with simple CCTV coverage, uh, it is not easily feasible to identify a person out of a, a good number of population. So now uh, that same CCTV concept is coming up with a new idea. What? Uh, there should be something, one mechanism. So now there is a night vision mechanism, there is a motion sensor based mechanism, there is a warning based system, suppose a CCTV system is there and some movement is there and the person that is moving, uh, or uh, the CCTV system gives a warning to the respective person on their mobile phone or any other places, so they can become alarmed. So here, uh, here with this CCTV surveillance, all what we can identify that uh, yes, a face is visible, like uh, uh, the prominent features is visible, like person appears to use a mobile phone, uh, uh, clear fingerprint may be there, attempts for uh, attempting uh, theft may be there, and the person himself is aware that camera is there, he's hiding his face. So uh, this is something uh, uh, which gives the technological advancement for the CCTV system to upgrade themselves, but still there are certain uh, technological limitations that uh, you can't identify a single person with the same idea. So now there is intervention of AI based artificial intelligence technology with which a single face can be identified with the, from the, uh, the group of population or the entire population. So uh, in this cycle, we can say uh, the need of, uh, or origin of a problem is generated and thereby a customer is appearing in the, in the picture. And to meet the requirement of that customer, businessman came into the picture with a product and that product uh, is also dependent upon the, because certain law and order and policy related situation is there, the, the same incident is occurring again and again. So uh, there is a demand for that product in the market. 
from earlier traditional cctv technology there is upgradation technology earlier there was a dvr based technology now there is nvr based technology definitely upgradation uh, there was earlier a huge cable length was there now there is no not that much of length now, now single cable will be functional earlier night vision was not possible upgradation in the form of night vision technology is there earlier there was a limitation in the uh, terms of uh, storage capacity so with, with the basis with on the basis of cctv on the basis of technology that is uh, the motion sensor so that solution is also there then uh, uh, still uh, uh, we are hopeful that uh, uh, i have full respect to the police they are working on it they are they're fully cooperating it so hopefully they will be able to resolve it uh, still two months or over, uh, more is over in this case so still they have limitation in technology uh, um, whatsoever we can see but uh, there is definitely regular need of upgradation in the system competition is there earlier a single monochromatic uh, monoto camera to color night vision motion sensor so competition is there so technological evolution is there so this is basically a cycle of a business so in in a sum total we can say a sum total of all the events activities factors that uh, that are responsible for the sustenance, survival, and evolution of a business may be considered as a part of business environment. It contains everything regarding inception of that idea, regarding evolution of the technology, including the competition between different competitors, and uh, uh, including the policy also. So uh, basically, everybody is confident that when police can find a cattle thief, when they can find the dogs, why can't my, my case can be solved? So uh, let's technology be there to help them as well. So uh, as far as the nature of business environment is concerned, it is definitely dynamic, it's complex, relativity, and uh, there are interrelationships between factors and, uh, and above all, it is uncertain. It remain continue to fluctuate very quickly. Uh, you can see the very recent example of Corona uh, pandemic when everybody was the tourism industry that was mostly affected by the incident, which was flourishing. Uh, they have got their seasons, so all hotels were well packed back. Uh, so uh, it was uncertain. No, nobody, nobody can predict what's going to happen. And definitely there is interrelationship between different factors. One factor related to other, other factor. Availability of one product definitely related to the uh, growth of other factors. And there are other factors also. We will be discussing them in detail in the upcoming sections. Then, uh, as far as the scope for business environment is concerned, there are the, the internal and as well as the inter external environment, then the micro environment and macro environment, there may be specific and general environment, and there may be controllable and uncontrollable environment. So, there are various parameters like internal environment within the organization. Uh, there may be superior raw material available, there may be uh, inefficient human resources, the need to train them. And then as far as the external environment is concerned, which is altogether beyond the control of the organization. Example, changing political and economical condition, technological changes. We see, we see, we see if you are going for a monotonous uh, product and, and there is a rival coming up with a very sophisticated, very, very cheap technology, very, very uh, uh, cheap product. Uh, in terms of uh, financial aspects. So definitely it's going to affect the native, native market. Then uh, micro and macro environment, as well as the micro environment concern, affects the working of a particular business. Directly impacts business activities and incorporates customers, suppliers, market, intermediaries, as well as competitors. And uh, at, at, at the uh, outside, we can say it can be controllable up to some extent. Whereas, the macro environment impacts the working of all the businesses, uncontrollable and influences indirectly. For example, technological advancements such as blockchain, artificial intelligence has changed the face of business operations. As I mentioned that uh, AI is there in uh, artificial intelligence like I uh, uh, considered that case uh, earlier. So there is a definitely input of artificial intelligence in system and that artificial intelligence uh, is a way to uh, cater the need of larger masses and uh, uh, economically as well. All the costs that involve in the entire process is the cost that is involved in the R&D section. Once that uh, product is out, definitely there is a uh, R&D cost that needs to be incurred by the rival, not, not the person who is holding that uh, IP for that product. Then there are controllable and uncontrollable environments. Uncontrollable factors, namely global technological, legal and natural changes, 
So definitely they are beyond the control. And uh, definitely the recent corona pandemic is one of the major examples you know, of uncontrollable factor to all. And the, uh, the, this pandemic has hugely impacted the businesses and the changes in the strategic operations. Then uh, they are maybe controllable, right? so we can uh, uh, ignore them because they are definitely controllable that within the business uh, entity. Then a specific and general environment. There, there may be specific external forces that directly influence mm -hmm. a specific type of business enterprise. enterprise. Their decision, actions are directly pertinent for the achievement of operational goals. Example, customers, suppliers, competitors, and pressure groups. Where the general environment is concerned, economic, social, legal, social, cultural, technological, demographic, and global conditions that influence the organization. Then, uh, as far as the types of business environment is concerned, uh, we have discussed uh, earlier somehow. So there may be one you can say internal environment, another external environment. External itself may be micro as well as macro. And the uh, internal environment may include values, mission, and objective, organizational structure, culture, human resources, physical resources, and financial capabilities. Uh, as you can see, the first point in internal environment is values. So values, uh, you can say that uh, a business organization works on the basis of certain values, and those values uh, may somehow restrict them to take certain decisions. And uh, uh, whereas so, uh, some other organization that is not working on those same uh, values may, uh, may take different type of decision under certain kind of environment. And they definitely may be uh, into an environment of, of the uh, respective business. Well, as far as the external environment is concerned, it may be micro in the nature as well as the micro and the macro in the nature. And the micro environment definitely restricted to the specific businesses that includes supplier of imports, customers, marketing uh, intermediaries, competitors, public. Uh, as far as the marketing intermediary is concerned, it uh, may be type, to, type of the business model that is that, whether it is working on a B2B uh, based or B2C based. As far as the macro environment is concerned, uh, definitely economic environment, political legal environment, technological environment, global or international environment, social cultural environment, demographic environment, and natural environment. Then uh, how can we see the, the topic we are discussing, how it is important. So it enables the organization to identify the business opportunities and achieving first mover advantage. Help the firms to identify the threats and early warning signals. Help in tapping the assembling uh, resources. Help in adjusting and adapting to rapid changes, assist in planning and policy making. Help in performance improvement. Well, uh, as far as the environmental analysis is concerned, uh, definitely entrepreneur business uh, entity will look for uh, certain analysis with uh, venturing into a business to look for uh, beyond the boundary. So they need to scan for the internal as well as the external factors. They need to group uh, the uh, scan factors, how they find whether they are positive one, whether they are negative one, how they are going to affect their organization in the long term, short term, immediately, uh, how the rivals are working on it. And then definitely observations on internal factors. Monitoring of external factors is definitely important because we need to remain updated uh, what's going to happen in the surroundings and we need to think of uh, about anticipated changes. Long way as well. Defining the variables for the analysis. So uh, definitely there's a need. critical to us for consideration purposes. Forecast in this regard. So, uh, forecasting in this regard, then strategic formulation, strategic formulation for the future purpose, current, it may be long, future planning, and there is a regular need for evaluation, evaluation in terms of uh, what we anticipated, what happened, what were our uh, planning, how far our planning is working, in reference to our. Uh, uh, 
strategies that we followed, then uh, it can all come under, under the umbrella of SWOT analysis that is called as strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Here, here the strengths of the organization is considered uh, in all the possible aspects of strengths where the organization will be able to compete with the uh, uh, with the uh, the rivals, with the uh, emerging situations. So, so, what are the strength? How to maintain them? How to uh, further build them? And, and all what are uh, that is yet uh, uh, still ignored from. And there may be weaknesses of uh, any organization. So definitely, they need to work on weaknesses. Whether they have a skill manpower, whether there is a uh, retrenchment or uh, whether it's uh, uh, the employees uh, not bound with their organization emotionally or so. Then what are the opportunities, whether there's an opportunity for the in the domestic market, whether there's a uh, likely policy change in the in the current uh, political scenario or, or there is likely change in the future scenario, how the local policies, government policies, uh, the national policies, international policies going to affect the business in that particular area. And above all, uh, what are the threats? Threats from uh, within the organization, threat, threats from the outside the organization, threats uh, that may be unanticipated, uh, like unpredictable. So all those can be can be considered for uh, proper analysis, environmental analysis, as far as the business is concerned. Then uh, there are certain uh, uh, macroeconomic parameters. Macroeconomics is basically a study of behavior and performance of economy as a whole. And uh, uh, they, there are certain models that bring about certain relationship among different macro variables. Uh, it may be income determinant uh, determination, it may be price level determination, it may be investment, employment, product, and money market equilibrium, exchange rate, payment, uh, uh, the balance of payment, etc., are the main area of uh, macroeconomic theories. And uh, macroeconomics also analyzes the working and effects of major government policies like monetary and fiscal policies of the, or, on the economy. So definitely uh, we, uh, we understand that monetary and fiscal policies are policies that are there in the uh, almost opposite uh, uh, part of the economy and definitely they work for the smooth function of the economy and that, that are developed by the government. Uh, we will be discussing in the upcoming section of the investigator side. Um, the famous uh, academy GM could boast quoted macroeconomic theory is a theory of income employment, price and money, and uh, uh, whereas according to Paul Sanderson, macroeconomics is a study of the behavior of the economy as a whole, it examines the overall level of a nation's output, employment, prices and foreign trade. And there is definitely uh, an interaction between business and macroeconomics. Inflation, inflation is one of the prominent problems of the macroeconomics and it refers to a situation where Price of goods and services rise continuously over the period of time and it can affect both consumer as well as producer. It can affect consumer because uh, they, they lose their purchasing power or their money loses their purchasing power. And producer affect in a way that producer is there to run the entire supply chain and uh, they are producing accordingly but uh, their, market, their product is not consumed by the consumer. So there is a there is a uh, stock piling up and definitely that is not a, that, uh, a favorable aspect for any business. And uh, uh, there are various ways uh, which affects the inflation. Uh, there is one concept that is called as cost push or increase in the cost of production. So if the cost of production is increased, definitely there will be some of these to bear that burden. So in case of uh, input cost is increased, the increase it affects the supplier or producer. To alleviate the problem, the central bank of the country takes the help of the monetary policy to address this cost push uh, aspect. Then one of the instruments uh, in the monetary policy is increasing the repo rate, that is the uh, repo rate and uh, reverse repo rate. This increases, uh, uh, this increase in the repo rate leads to both increasing the cost of borrowing or business and shortage of money supply in the system. And these uh, both affect the, uh, the scale of production because uh, for a business uh, entity, uh, they, they they get short funds uh, because now the fund that they were using for production is costly, so they will start uh, slow production. And uh, if product is slow uh, coming in the market, definitely consumer will compete for accordingly. So producers and drivers keep a close eye on the government concerning 
any change in market policy and other policies and accordingly they, they control or regulate their business as well. Then there are some important concepts of uh, macroeconomics. One is net national product that is called as NNP at factor cost and uh, at factor cost it is called as NNP at C. Then there is gross domestic product, gross uh, GDP at market price uh, that is called as GDPNP and GDP at cost and price. price. So uh, I think we, we are familiar with this, uh, these two terms. Uh, one important point that is uh, these terms, one important point about GDP is that uh, it is defined as the value of final goods and services produced within the borders of a country during a fiscal year. It also includes income earned locally by foreigners. So that is, that is critical. Whereas it excludes income received by nationals from uh, abroad. So uh, uh, all money that we receive from uh, our, our, belo uh, our beloved one who are working uh, abroad is not considered under GDP. Whereas any foreigner who is working in our country, uh, whatsoever is earning, so that is part of our GDP. So there, there are the two important terms that is aggregate demand and another one is aggregate supply. And aggregate demand is the, uh, one of the most important concepts in macroeconomics. In simple words, it means total demand of consumer and capital goods at a given point of time. There are, there are methods of calculating it. Whereas aggregate supply is, it shows the amount of output firms plan to supply different levels of prices or the total supply of goods and services in economy. Sales firms like to sell more output and increase product prices. The AS has to upward slope in supply and uh, accordingly the intersection of AD and SS determines the short term equilibrium in the economy. And then there's another important aspect as well as concern that is multiplier or investment multiplier. So here the businessmen uh, look for how much its money going to grow in the, that economy. So that's what you know, that's called as multiplier effect. So investment uh, look, investors look for this particular value. So if they have a reasonable return on their investment, they will uh, look for that economy. Otherwise, they will stick for that. Then uh, there are four economic sectors. One is household sector, firms, global sector, and fund sector. And uh, on the basis of combination of different sectors, there are uh, uh, different markets like goods market, factors market, and money market. Then uh, there is a concept of circular flow of income and expenditure. Uh, based on those factors uh, that, we, that we consider, first model is called as two-sector flow model, in which household, firms, and banks. Bank is the intermediary. So whatsoever the uh, saving is uh, for the household, they will give to bank and give a bank give it to the uh, firms as an investment. And firm uh, or those firms. Uh, uh, Gives the product and the cycle continues. It's called as two sector flow model. Then there is a three sector form model. In uh, this three sector form model, three sector model, there is an additional component government. Government also uh, invests, government also buys. Then there is a four sector model. And then in this four sector model, there is an additional component that is the foreign uh, sector. So for, when foreign sector comes, it comes for the import as well as the export. And uh, we will see the upcoming sections in the uh, in terms of uh, economy. The import is uh, not good, whereas export is something which uh, will be injecting money in the, uh, in the system. So uh, I quickly go through the unit number one. Uh, let's move to unit number two. It is uh, regarding economic growth and development. There are very good uh, uh, definitions and uh, theories here. So, uh, the, the, as far as the economic growth is concerned, the economic growth of the country is, depend, uh, is determined by various factors. Uh, you can see uh, how a person is able to purchase in the global market, how he is positioned in the global market. On the basis of uh, certain PMT is considered, uh, on the basis of certain uh, economics is settled, which with the, a person is identified that he is able to buy expensive material in the global economy. And on the basis of that, the World Bank uh, placed the countries in different groups like low income group, low middle income group, upper, mid, uh, upper middle income group, and high income group, where the, uh, the per capita income, gross national income per, per capita, is in the range of uh, uh, US dollar 1035 or less in 2019. They are considered as a low income group. Uh, the, the examples are Afghanistan, Haiti, Somalia, Madagascar, Ethiopia. When there is a lower uh, middle income group, and India, uh, unfortunately, in this group, 
and uh, we share the place with India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, Pakistan. Then there are upper middle class, uh, upper middle income group countries, which include uh, our, our income range from 4,000 uh, to, to somewhere 12,000. And the countries in this list is China, Thailand, Cuba, Maldives, 12. Whereas high income group include the countries having the income uh, beyond 12,536 or more which includes USA, UK, Finland, France, New Zealand, Germany, Norway, Gibraltar, Oman. Then uh, there are certain theories uh, that they are the, depict uh, the growth models, economic growth model. And one was given by the very uh, two famous economists, namely Roy Harold and the Easy Thomas in 1950s. And this highlights the role of saving and investment in an economy. So how they are connected, it is very much, very much uh, explained in the model. Then uh, they are, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, how it is determined based on income matter. Uh, uh, it is also how it is determined based on the expenditure matter. It's in view there. Then what are the major components for the expenditure matter? Like it may be private consumption expenditure, it may be investment or, or gross fixed capital formation. Then government expenditure. We, are, we mentioned that in the three-factor model, the government is also a, uh, a component. The net exports, uh, it's also in the four-model system. Uh, the foreign, when foreign debt is there, export and import model, so that is there. Then uh, there are certain precautions that need to be ensured while estimating the national income. It is the expenditure of intermediate goods and services, otherwise, otherwise it, will be, uh, it will encounter the problem of double counting. Transfer payments like scholarship, etc. Then income earned from second hand goods, then income from sales and shares, bonds, windfall gains like lotteries need to be considered. Uh, it must be excluded while measuring national income. Then there is a solo model of economic growth. Uh, uh, it is also called as new classical growth theory and was propounded by Robert Solo of MIT in 1956. And he also got, he was also awarded the, uh, the Nobel Prize of Economics in 1987. Uh, this model propounds that uh, changes in the population growth rate, uh, we need to consider it very carefully. The change in the population growth rate of technological progress and saving rate brings about changes in the level of output. There are three basic propositions developed on new classical growth theory. First, the growth of output in the long run steady state is determined by the rate of growth of labor force and the rate of growth of labor productivity definitely. Then second, the level of per capita income, PCY, depends upon the rate of saving and investment GDP. Third, there will be convergence in the income levels of the different countries with certain assumptions related to labor force growth, saving, depreciation, and productive growth. The major assumptions of model are uh, the labor force grows as a constant exogenous rate, constant returns of to scale, and output is a function of capital and labor, and both factors are subject to diminishing productivity. The elasticity of substitution is equal to one and above all, all of the saving is converted into investment, that is no independent investment function, and the sixth one, that is variable capital output ratio. And uh, there is a detail about this low model, uh, you can go through, it's very much they are clear and very much explained in the uh, literature in a very, very uh, convenient manner. Then there is an endogenous growth and net growth theory. There is a simple equation explaining endogenous growth and which can be expressed, which, which is very much expressed in their uh, literature. Then uh, there are, uh, this, is, this is a very interesting one, there are major theories of underdevelopment. When we talk about growth and development, Still, there is a, there is an issue of underdevelopment. There is a low income uh, issue. So the, the, this is a called as the vicious cycle of poverty theory. So it was propounded by Professor Noxy and uh, it, it uh, explains in the way a circular constellation of forces tending to act and react in a such a way as to keep a country in a state of poverty. Underdeveloped countries need to break this cycle with the help of entrepreneurship and the labor force. Then the uh, low level of equilibrium trap model. So it was given by Richard Nelson in 1956. It highlights the underdeveloped are trapped in a low level of income. In UDC, there is a low per capita income, which is because of poverty that individuals income, individual income level are low, which are the cause of low saving. 
and investment rate and ultimately low national income according to, accordingly. There's a need of a quantum leap of our minimum per capita income is required to above which people are able to raise the level of savings and this results in a higher level of national income. Then uh, there is a need for a critical minimum effort theory uh, that was given by Harvey uh, uh, Lipston, which, uh, which which was opinion that underdeveloped countries were entrapped in this cycle of poverty and to rise above the poverty trap, a minimum level of investment or critical minimum effort is needed, which is paramount importance of raising per capita income. There are there are other other theories also in this. Uh, one interesting one is in the upcoming slide. According to this, according to theory, in every economy there are two forces. One, income depressing forces or shocks that lead to a fall in per capita income, and the second one is income generating forces or stimulants. So there is a two factors. One is shock, another one is stimulant. The main feature of underdeveloped economies is that income depressing forces are abundant. Sure, and. Uh, are one of the main reasons for the underdevelopment and to overcome these hurdles or to break the chain of underdevelopment a critical level of investment is, is indeed needed. The one of the theories, the big push theory, it was pro uh, proposed by uh, Professor Paul N. Rosentin, who uh, gave the theory in 1943 uh, which we have cited the example. We all know that uh, when we have uh, when we have take off, it need a uh, 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 a very very high thirst to a very high push to take off the plan. So uh, considering the same concept, so uh, to in, in order uh, to be airborne, that we need to put a high amount of energy. So similarly, for an economy to take off, there is a need for a big push is needed to unshackle itself from the chains of underdevelopment. So instead of, instead of uh, giving that uh, that uh, underdeveloped country small small amount of packets of uh, Funds or so, so a so huge amount of investment is required. And there is a, another Rostov's strategies of economy. Right? Rostov in 1959 presented a five stage uh, of economic growth, which all continues countries must pass to become developed. And they, the one is traditional society where all are like a and the precondition to take off and take off, drive up to maturity and age of uh, mass consumption. So these are the five stages. Uh, it, this will be sequentially over continuously from uh, starting from the agriculture to look for certain certain innovations to to take off in the market uh, the, the growth uh, uh, in the uh, in the economy and then there is a sort of settlement and in the end age of high masses consumption when you have ample amount of uh, savings and then, then there will be use uh, the aspect of usage of consumption aspect as the fifth one. Then there is a concept of national income. So the health and well-being of an economy can be judged by the amount of total income that the citizens of the economy are earning. National income accounts help us to understand the growth and trajectory of the economy. And the, uh, it definitely uh, is accounted by a variety of, variety of parameters. And there are different concepts that are related to national income. One is gross national product, uh, GNP. National net national product that is NNP, net domestic product NDP, market prices, uh, factor prices, and personal income and disposable income. There may be different approaches in estimating uh, national income. And interestingly, uh, the the result will be the same. The methods will be the three different methods that are used for the estimation of national income include product method or value added method, income method, and expenditure method. That is the method we look for private consumption expenditure, investment on gross fixed capital information, then global expenditure also, net exports also. When uh, there is certain precaution, we need to look for the estimate of national income. Then there is a the concept of inflation. Uh, we, we have gone through this concept of inflation somehow uh, in a brief in the previous session so i'm skipping it a, a little bit so uh, in short we can say too much money chases too few goods that's, that's the industry that's the ideal way to explain this and there may be different methods of national inflation that, that is one is uh, 
change in price index number that is called as PIN and another one is gross national product defined. And now uh, uh, GNP that, that I wish to share here is GNP is known as GNP implicit price differential and it is also directly obtained like CPI and uh, WI PI. Uh, nominal GNP is the GNP at the prevailing prices and the real GNP is at cost prices or the base here. Out of these two indices, the GNP differential is considered to be better because of the broadest coverage. Then a uh, different type of inflation, uh, there will be, uh, you can see there are three major type of inflation out of which the uh, the uh, last two are very, very uh, we can say not really. The first one creeping on moderate inflation and as the board mentioned, it's a moderate uh, and it keeps on uh, growing accordingly. So generally, generally when the rate of inflation is single digit, it turns the, the creeping on moderate rate of inflation. This type of inflation is mostly expected by both consumer and producer uh, and they have to economy activities accordingly. Whereas developing inflation is uh, definitely it's a double digit uh, and re, uh, range uh, over the uh, period of time. So definitely it, it, it erodes the saving of the economy and has a disaster effect on the fixed income group. So those who have, who have a potential to grow substantially can survive but those who have a fixed income definitely then hyperinflation, it's a, this is one of the most dangerous form of inflation in, in, the, in which prices rise by more than 50% of quarter or month or so. Then uh, there may be causes of inflation, demand for inflation, cost of inflation, and it, it, it affects uh, uh, various components invariably. Then uh, there is a concept of uh, impact on income distribution, retribution of value of money, and impact on borrowers and vendors. Uh, so interestingly, everyone is uh, bothered about the uh, inflation, but the one component that is borrower, he is happy with the inflation because he, he repays the same amount uh, uh, as, uh, as it already agreed upon. But the, uh, the problem is that uh, the value of the same money is now lower. So let's move to unit number three quickly. So uh, it's a social, cultural, and political legal environment. So uh, uh, for any business in that team, there is a definitely uh, not a business to survive. It, it, it works in the surrounding and all the aspects of what kind of society they are dealing with, what kind of uh, social, political environment in the system is, and that all together depend upon the various aspects, including religion, language, education, uh, type of political setup, type of, type of uh, political stability in the area. So various elements of the social environment, too, social problems, prospects, social institutions and systems along with their social values and attitudes, education and culture and the impact on social groups and activities, socio-economic order and corresponding rule and responsibility of the government, where are, there, there are different elements of social environment that, that may be attitudes and belief, social class, lifestyle, style, preferences, social communities, social institutions, education and culture, and they, in the above all, there is a uh, role of government is also in there to somehow, like, to maybe not directly, but somehow in the regulation as well. Then uh, there is a concept of cultural environment. Culture is a range of human actions which are socially transmittable. Uh, it can be explained as a complex combination of moral customs, law, uh, uh, beliefs, knowledge, and habits acquired by individual members society and it is embedded in a way of life. In other words, culture is a product of social interactions among humans and determines the human behavior. Cultural environment is concerned with the culture within which the organization operates and includes the culture of its target market and the workforce. And there will be certain elements of cultural environment, the knowledge and beliefs, religion, language, ethnicity, Evaluation of social culture uh, environment when we go for we need to look in detail. Uh, we need to study carefully and uh, this aspect, this branch specifically you know, for the uh, uh, for various aspect of human behavior and aspect is called as uh, anthropology, uh, their uh, society and relationship and other things. And uh, as far as the current scenario in the social culture environment is concerned, there is a change in fortune trade. There, uh, there are new social issues coming up, and then there is a population growth and multi-diversity is there. Uh, um, the uh, cities are growing at a very rapid rate, and when they create, uh, with that grow, grow, uh, rate of growth, there are certain myths that are broken. As far as I, I talk about uh, social issues, 
uh, this World Cup football is going on and then they are the, to address the issues of LGBT community. Definitely some teams uh, came up uh, to have some band in their support and uh, certain issues are there, so certain social issues that uh, that may be globalized but that are coming in the picture and uh, you know, the global concern are almost uh, unanimous or uh, in the better aspect for a liberal society in my Political environment is also important, crucial role in, uh, in, in any setup. And uh, what, are, what can be the elements of a political environment, like what are the political ideologies like left wing, right wing, moderate or so, and what kind of democracy is that? It's a liberal democracy, or it's, a, it's a restricted democracy, or it's, it's, it's not at all a democracy. Then civil liberty is how, how uh, citizens of the country are allowed to express themselves, uh, how they are able to to, to uh, frame laws for them. Then international political relations also play an important role. Uh, India can even cite an example uh, in this context. In the, in the global crisis that is there uh, between Russia and Ukraine, uh, and uh, there's uh, two poles, so one uh, taking side with the Ukraine, and another taking side with the Russia. So there are, uh, there are restrictions for having business with the uh, Russia. Uh, globally, there are uh, uh, certain uh, restrictions posed by the global community or dominant players. So uh, India is still on the basis of its interna strong international policy, able to defend its right, it's still uh, doing business with Russia, still doing business with the uh, US as well, and it's still uh, uh, and not under the, those uh, restrictions. Then there's a role of political stability. It's, it's very much important if your political stability is there, government is going to have very firm policies to address the very, very serious issues that are that will be at some, at some time. Uh, it may be limited, it may be restricted. Then uh, there is a need for a legal environment. That legal environment, which which uh, not only protects the business, not only protects the consumer, not only protects the financial body, it, it gives the the confidence in the system. Then uh, what can be the elements of a legal environment? It may be common law, it may be civil law, theoretical law, law, and law. Uh, as I mentioned in the in the one of the case study that I referred that is case number triple five. So with the advancement of technology, someone who is putting his investment definitely into it and uh, get a return back. Current scenario of political legal environment include uh, there is a regular change in the industrial policies, business reforms, bank mergers, infrastructure development, skill development programs. Then um, the government uh, framework is there to promote the business uh, uh, in, the, in the various forms. Uh, it works for uh, promotion for international trade, it works for the foreign trade of uh, goods and services, setting up special economic zones uh, to uh, to address the special need of that organization and statutory autonomous bodies, public sector undertaking, other organizations are there to address the respective issues. Then there is a tariff commission, NITI IO, or currently it is called as, uh, probably it is called as planning commission, the National Institute for Transforming India. Then uh, there is a specific Ministry of Finance, it uh, has certain departments, Department of Economic Affairs, Department of Expenditure, Department of Revenue, Department of Financial Services, Department of Investment and Public Assist Management, Department of Public Enterprises. Then there is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a fiscal and monetary policy uh, where in uh, where government put uh, certain restrictions and liberties to run the economy in a smooth manner. The fiscal policy is the national revenue and expenditure policy by which it plans to strike the balance between the ever-growing needs and limited resources availability in the country, whereas the monetary policy acts as alternating, alternating monetary supply, money supply, and the interest rate. So definitely they are count, uh, the forces that are counterbalancing. And uh, the, as far as the legal environment is concerned, the law is there capital market, to address the capital market. The security, uh, Securities Contract Act, uh, the Security Exchange of SEBI is there. The uh, over the counter exchange of India is there. Foreign Exchange uh, Management FEMA is there. Then Sikh Industrial Companies uh, Special Provision Act 1985 uh, is there. Then Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India is there. Consumer Protection Act, Competition Commission of India, Environmental Protection Act, India, and a few other legislation are there to uh, that may be considered as a legal framework in the business side. The Essential Communities Act, the Trademark Act, the Patents Act, and the Urban Land Act. So uh, these are the certain laws we can go through in a uh, very, very careful manner. So there are certain amendments in the Companies Act uh, 2013. 
and one of the interesting act uh, amendment that is there in the I think that is one that uh, thirty five or so. So we will be looking in the next next chart. So. The concept of sick company or, uh, or uh, somehow it is related to non performing assets or so indirectly. So, uh, when one company who is unable to pay the 50% uh, of the debt, uh, the person who secured debt of a company uh, within the limited period of time, so they will be considered a sick company and accordingly the actions will be taken. Then uh, uh, there is a provision for a uh, avoidance of monopolistic treatment uh, practices so as uh, the consumer's right is protected and businesses are also secure and there is a restrictions on unrestricted trade practices and uh, there is an interesting act that is consumer protection act and every consumer has the right to safety, the right to be informed, right to choose and right to be heard it is heard by the, uh, right to consume education and competition commission of India also gives the opportunity to compete uh, in the fair sense. Then there is the Environment Protection Act in 1985. It provides in 1986. It provides the Protection of Environment and Act and uh, it gives very, very, very interesting uh, and healthy uh, laws for the uh, for the life uh, liberty of the uh, civilians also. And there are certain other uh, uh, legislation that Essential Commodities Act, uh, the Trademark Act, Patents Act, Urban Land Saving Act. Then now move to the unit you know, number four, four that is uh, business ethics and corporate social responsibility. Uh, it is very, very important in terms of uh, uh, the private sector being important role in the growth of the economy. So, uh, as we talked in the very first unit, uh, there is a concept of values. So every business works on the uh, on the self determined policies like uh, we need to work on strictly this line we will not deviate them. All those lines that we consider ethically correct comes under the ethic. Nobody is forcing them, but they are supposed to follow them. So unethical principle, unethical policies needed to follow in many ways. Uh, everything that is there uh, can't be put into the law. So it is the uh, ethics that are put up in the uh, business by the by the organization or the founders of the entity. So their, uh, their source may be, uh, may be genetically might may be religious, may be cultural or philosophical system and it may be therefore from legal system. Although the legal system uh, doesn't go much beyond in the ethics in certain aspects, but there may be certain code of conduct. Then uh, what is the importance of business ethics to understand the reasons behind increasing influence of corporate society to ensure that no harm is done to society to meet ethical expectations more effectively to enable companies to identify employ consumer concerns at an early age to improve the quality of a firm's relationship with its key stakeholders and uh, uh, it plays important to issues in the business. Uh, in the business. Preferred by a prospective employee and create uh, and creation of quality talent pool, less number of members in the organization, that is, lower attrition rate, less number of supply strike or labor unrest, and corporate goodwill enables bargaining power, which uh, results in cost reduction or increase in production and achieving economies of, of scale, more revenue, more profits, longer business viability. Then there are certain uh, uh, national entities uh, that. Uh, promote the concept of the ethics or uh, the CGR, we can say. In the purview of corporate governance is the right of an equitable treatment of shareholders, then interest of other stakeholders, role and responsibilities of the board in integrating and ethical behavior. Then now it's a corporate social responsibility is a very important aspect and, uh, uh, and uh, in terms of defining the definition we uh, say so. Uh, uh, Keith Davis again defines the social responsibility as business mass decision and actions taken for a reason at least partially beyond the firm's direct economic and techno, uh, technical interest. Then as far as the regulatory mechanism is concerned, uh, it was section 135 in the Companies Act of 2013. India became the first country to make CSR spending and disclosure mandatory for large companies with a specific turnovers. And the turnover limit is somewhere uh, uh, the annual turnover of 1000 crores and uh, net worth of 500 crores 
uh, and the net profit of five uh, crores in the preceding three financial years. And uh, there is, interestingly, there is a penal provisions also. If uh, companies are not able to spend, uh, they need to form a committee and uh, they need to formulate or invest that. If they are not able to form a uh, invest that and they need to put that money in a specific bank account and then they need to invest or expand that in the uh, upcoming years. Uh, CSR may be for shareholder purpose, CSR may be for the employees uh, to the various hospitals and uh, CSR may be there to enhance the community participation, CSR may be there to, to increase the customer base as well. Then there may be certain advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, the major disadvantage is that uh, we public may thought of that it's the responsibility of the company to look after them. Although this is a voluntary aspect, they can't mm -hmm. they can't post, they're working on, they are putting their uh, profit in it. Then uh, the, there are benefits of the CSR. Communities provide the license to operate, attracting or retaining employees and communities as excellent supplier, enhancing corporate reputation. And what can be the drivers for the CSR? Uh, economic consideration, ethical consideration, innovation and learning, employee motivation, risk management and risk reduction, access to capital and increased shareholder value, reputation of the brand, market position of share, and strengthen supply relationship, cost saving, public image, government regulation as well. Government regulation, as I mentioned, uh, there's a concept of uh, provision as well. And uh, as far as the uh, the leading example of uh, CSI initiative in India is Tata, Tata Group, you understand. One of the examples uh, is in uh, values is uh, free, in a free enterprise, the community is not just another stakeholder in the business, but in fact, is the very purpose of the, of the existence. There are good examples of Reliance Industry Infosys, and uh, we all uh, recall the uh, Nathan Tata G's share in the, in the section of uh, Corona pandemics. So, with this, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.